how have consumer expectations changed and what must brands do differently today, say, you know, versus 20 years ago to remove friction in their retail experiences and attract and retain customers? Yeah, well, shipping is one of those you know things that's changed you know the most in in those days, um, you know, pre web. If you went to a catalog company and you looked at their P and L, you know, there were ones that didn't fit this bill. They were super successful, but um, most many catalogers, if you asked them where they were making their money, there were two lines on the P and L where they were making money. One was on shipping revenue, and the other one was on the sale of their list, the rental of their list. And everything else, the, the actual sale of the product that they were selling, they weren't making very much money on it. Well, you you now bring Amazon into the mix, um, and you asked about you know customer expectations. Customer expectations are that I get it same day, you know, or I get it you know next day. Certainly, the the idea of waiting, you know, seven to ten business days, which Trust me, plenty of retailers still take that long to get product into consumers' hands. The difference is um, the, the customer today is not tolerating paying for that service, if you call it service in quotes, uh, they want that for free, certainly free over a certain dollar hurdle. So that's a big expectation. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, about uh, it, it also about time, you know, the idea that I send an email to a retailer and they tell me uh, that uh, they'll get back to me in 24 to 48 hours. That is just, you know, crazy to me. Um, you know, if you're not a retailer where you're giving customer direct access through text or chat or, or something like that, I think you're totally missing uh, the boat. So speed, um, speed of information, speed of getting my order are, are, are certainly some of the things that have changed. I yeah, think one of the really interesting parts of this is, is really talking about that actual like chat experience as well. Right. Like you've driven all these users into your site. You're asking them to go through that that experience. Why are they reaching out in the first place? But what is the experience within reaching out? Like, I mean, you, you hit it perfectly with saying, OK, you reach out with an email and they say, we'll get back to you in 24 to 48 hours. Like, what do you do in that moment? You obviously go somewhere else. Like no one's waiting that time anymore unless I it's laugh. super exclusive. <laughs> yeah, I and and look, I'm a consumer as well, and I'm a a different kind of a consumer than the average consumer because I know what's going on the other yeah. side of the the screen, and I laugh when I you know get a note back that says you know, we'll get back to you in one to two days, um, and and I think Nick, your point is is also a good one about the experience in chat. You know, so many of the chat you know bots that are out there are you know there there's automated, you know, and I really want to talk to a live person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, many retailers are not giving you that level. It's it's all pre um, arranged answers to questions. And then only after you bang your head against the wall, can you get to a live agent? And then once you get to the live agent, they're handling six chats at the same time. And, you know, I, I'm the least patient person I know. Um, and if they're not talking to me in real time, then that's just aggravating. Yeah, that, that harkens back to they're, they're applying the same thing they did with their 800 number and that whole automated response up front that it takes you 26 steps or you have to keep yelling, agent, agent, you know, to get through the process <laughs> for those I, of us who are frustrated. Easily. I just copy the word agent and I just keep pasting it and hit enter until the, <laughs> the automation is like, this guy's erroring us out, like something's wrong. <laughs> That's funny. And it's funny, Mark, when you talk about the when we used to mail in orders with checks. And I remember that from a kid and it, it was six to eight weeks to get your product. Right. And now you talk about people get upset if it's more than six or eight hours to get your product. So wrapping this back into marketing, like it, it's kind of showing us that the experience inside after you've driven the user into the actual the volume, right? Let's talk about volume, the funnel. But each of the experiences throughout that funnel kind of serve as the marketing team for the lower funnel itself. So you come to the homepage. If you have a good homepage experience, you might go to the product page. But if you didn't have a good one, then you're going to stop on the homepage and you're already out of there. And that just keeps going down that funnel. So as you kind of think about that funnel, I like to think about each, each stage, the higher the level in that funnel, 
each stage is the marketing team for the next stage into the funnel until you ultimately get out of the checkout. Yeah. And, and, you know, one of the things that, you know, it's it, people understand this intuitively, but they don't think about it so much is, you know, once you get them to, let's call it to your homepage or to your site, regardless of where they are, you know, you, you're out of pocket marketing dollars. All right. Sure. You're going to have some organic traffic that's free and you're going to have natural traffic that's free and direct load traffic that's free. But, you know, in most businesses, um, you know, more than half of the traffic is being driven by some kind of a paid media um, and driven by a click. So, you know, now you've got customers, uh, you, you're out of pocket and so much of that traffic leaves because of the experience that the customer has once they get there. And to your point, Nick, about the funnel, yeah, you know, what's their first experience, you know, whether it be on a category page or a PDP, product detail page or the home page. And then as they move further in, um, that's all, all things that you could be doing to enhance that experience. And, you know, I, I say this all the time. So many brands come to me and say, geez, we need more traffic. And my answer is, you know what? You don't need more traffic. You need to do more with the traffic that you're getting and your business will grow and be more profitable. And, um, you know, a lot of businesses don't focus that way. Yeah, that's that's kind of tapping on that experience side, side aesthetics and usability, which we'll, we'll obviously have episodes on that as well. But um, it's, it's really giving us the understanding that everything is intertwined. I mean, it, you know, at a marketing level, if you're driving the wrong user in the first place, then their experience is going to be worse. I mean, if, if you have the wrong person there, they're obviously not going to convert. So how do we make sure that we, you know, have campaigns that are focused on creating the fr friction list experience for the right user? Now, all of a sudden the, the equation becomes more complicated, but if you break it down into bite-sized chunks, each one can become you know, more consumable. And, and it, it reminds me of that old expression. It's, it's yours to lose, right? You get the customer there and then, then you have lots of opportunities to lose them in that process. <clears throat> yeah. So, and, you know, I, I think that you've got, um, you know, it's interesting, you know, I, I shop a lot online, um, not only to buy stuff, but to see what people are doing. And, you know, even the brands that I shop with most often, most frequently, let's leave Amazon out of this, you know, a lot of them know a lot about me. Um, not only my, my psychographics and my lifestyle, they know, you know, lots of purchases about me yet, you know, and I do this experiment with my wife, she'll sit with her laptop and I'll sit with my desktop and we'll go to the same site and see what they show us. And she's never bought and I'm a good buyer. And yet we're having the same exact experience. They're showing me the same images, the same product, the same path. And that's a real problem. Um, and you'd be surprised. Um, retailers that you would expect would have had the, the thought capability and the deep pockets to be able to more tailor a personalized experience are not doing so. Hmm. A lot of opportunities, it sounds like, for, for uh, increasing performance as well as reducing friction. So... Mm -hmm. 